everybody, and welcome to our webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're excited to have you here to learn more about our new itineraries for 2018. But before we get started, I just want to go through a few housekeeping notes. Everyone on the line is muted, but if you have a question at any point during the broadcast, type it into the question pane and we'll try to get to as many questions as we can. Um, just wanted to give a little background for those of you who are just learning about Zagram Expeditions. We are We were founded 27 years ago by six explorers and friends who wanted to make a career out of their passion for exploring the world. And two of our founders, Mike Messick and Jack Grove, are still leading trips for us. We travel to all seven continents on expeditions by land and sea. Our small ship cruises carry about 100 guests, and our overland adventures are designed for about 12 guests, depending on the destination. Unlike other tour operators, our calendar of expeditions changes from year to year. We plan each new season based on feedback from our expedition staff and guests, along with extensive research and scouting from our operations team to build a unique lineup of trips each year. We literally sit around a giant map of the world each spring to plot out where we are going to go. We are also all inclusive, which means that virtually everything is included in the cost of our expeditions. All activities, snorkeling, diving, kayaking, cultural tours, gratuities, meals, including beer and wine with lunch and dinner, transfers, gift certificates for expedition gear and books, the list goes on. And finally, and probably the best thing about Zagreb is our world-class team of leaders we assemble each for each expedition. These are the people who wrote the books and have spent so much time in each destination that they can provide in-depth information on the wildlife, history, and culture. They are not only there to educate and inspire you, but to also make discoveries right alongside you when you are out exploring each day. And that is the perfect segue for me to introduce you to our presenters today. First, I would like to introduce Mark Brazil. Mark just returned from our wild Alaska expedition, and we are lucky enough to have him here in the office with us before he heads back to his home in Hokkaido. Mark is a well-known ornithologist and a published writer. In fact, he is in the final stages of his latest book called A Field Guide to the Birds of Japan, and is also one of Zagram's longtime leaders. He not only leads trips for us, but he designs them, including the ever popular Snow Monkeys and Cranes of Japan, which has a wait list now stretching through 2019, but also new trips like our Cultural Japan Expedition, which we just learned has one cabin left, one room left for our 2017 departure, and our new Hokkaido trip, which he's here to talk to you about today. Welcome, Mark. Nice to be here. Joining Mark is John Nicholson. John is our Director of Itinerary Development and Operations. John has been with Zagram for over 21 years and during that time has overseen virtually every aspect of the company. But because John is such an avid traveler, he has visited nearly 100 countries and every continent, many several times over. He is perfectly suited to oversee the development of each and every one of our unique itineraries, including creating new itineraries each season. And with that, I will hand it over to John. Good morning, everyone, uh, or good afternoon if you're uh, elsewhere in the United States or the world. Um, we're going to first talk about uh, a program that has some, a new country to visit and almost should be called um, Islands or Countries of Diversity. It's our Sea to Sahara program, which operates next April uh, from Cape Verde up to uh, Morocco. Um, this has, you get the flavor of Portugal in the Cape Verde Islands, um, Africa in Western Sahara, Spain in the Canary Islands, and a very Arabic Middle Eastern feel in Morocco. And the trip visits the Western Sahara, two stops. Uh, this is a first time visit and a place that most people have not been. Uh, it's a great way it's to experience the desert firsthand as it comes very close to the Atlantic in this part of Africa and will have excursions uh, inland. And for well-traveled people, this trip visits many places you likely haven't been. Um, the Cape Verde Islands, we get to some of the out islands. We visit Bravo, which is a very verdant um, tropical island, and nearby the island of Fogo, which is a volcanic island uh, and nearly barren. Um, we have some time at sea for lectures and then continue Western Sahara and up to some of the small islands in the Canaries before ending in Morocco with two nights in Marrakesh, the vibrant city that uh, you may have visited before but you never tire of. 
Mark's been on this trip in the past, so I'm going to let him fill in a little bit about his experiences when he was on it before. Thanks very much, John. Yeah, I'm very excited about this trip because although I've been on parts of this itinerary, we have the Western Sahara in there, which is a very exciting area of the world to be able to visit. And this is a trip that's got fantastic diversity. We've got groups of islands. I'm a fan of small island groups. We get to the, uh, the Cape Verde Islands, as John has said, very Portuguese. The architecture, the culture is very uh, Portuguese style. Whereas when we get to the Canaries, um, we are very much in a Spanish speaking world. And the highlights here for me are the scenic diversity of these islands, quite different. The island groups differ from each other and the islands within the groups differ so much one from another. So for example, in the Canary Islands, we, we visit an island which is, has lush forests, evergreen forests on La Gomera. And then we have the desert of uh, Lanzarote. And Lanzarote, of course, is a place, if you're interested in art and architecture, this is a, an island that has been so greatly influenced by the architect Cesar Manrique, who has created a style for the island. This has a fantastic feel to it, and there's a wonderful botanical garden there. Of course, as an ornithologist, there are endemic birds and species that really excite me about this trip. Um, for example, in the Cape Verde Islands, we've got endemic petrels, we've got endemic shearwaters, uh, we've also got endemic passerines and endemic raptors. So there are lots of special birds to look for in the Cape Verde Islands. As we head up um, out to the Canary Islands, we're looking for more endemic species. Um, two species of pigeon, the bowls and laurel pigeon. We've got cream-colored corsair and hubara bustards to look for. And then when we're at sea, we'll be looking for cetaceans, dolphins, and so on as we travel. So there's some great birding, there's a great scenic diversity. But I think for me, the absolute highlight is now having that longer spell in Morocco. We get a chance to spend a full day going up into the Atlas Mountains. Correct. And this is one of my all-time highlights, getting up early in the morning in darkness, going up into the mountains, and listening to the nightingales singing as the dawn chorus picks up in the morning. Yeah, so that is a, a unique feature and a change that we've had from doing this itinerary in the past. We've got um, some great leaders. Our expedition leader on this is our one of our co-founders, Mike Messick, been leading trips here for 27 years. Uh, cruise director is Kelsey. Mark, of course, is on. And then uh, naturalist uh, Rich Pagan, Many of you have traveled with elsewhere, and um, we then have Tom Sharp and Ron Wixman, as well as uh, probably four or five other staff uh, on this program. So uh, this trip leaves next April. Um, it's on the Island Sky, the 100-passenger vessel that we use uh, in many parts of the world. So we're going to move on now to Hokkaido, which is uh, a big focus of this, this morning, because we have Mark here, and this trip uh, was Mark's idea. He brought it up about two or three years ago, and we run with it, and we're the first to operate this trip. So I'm not going to say any more because this is truly Mark's trip. I only sort of held things uh, together. John, this is a, a trip that uh, has been a long dream for me, as you know. Um, we've done a lot of trips around Japan. We've yep. done traditional trips. Uh, we have started in Tokyo. Uh, we started in Niigata. We've gone west around Japan. Uh, we've been through the Inland Sea. We've been to all of those traditional sites. Um, we've done the islands of Japan. We've done the islands of Japan. <laughs> South, southern Japan. Um, we've been to all the places that most people would have seen or imagined when they think of going to see Japan. So what we wanted to do when we put this trip together, and um, my goal was to introduce the northern part of Japan. I actually live up here. I live in Hokkaido, just outside the city of Sapporo. So this is home for me. And I think this is the most beautiful part of Japan. It's certainly the wilder part of Japan. And historically, it was Japan's frontier. So it's quite different from the rest of Japan. So we're going to be starting off, um, we'll be traveling on the bullet train. We'll be taking yes. the, uh, the bullet train across Honshu from Tokyo up to Niigata. Um, and that will put us um, in great position to cruise northwards up to Japan's northern island of Hokkaido. And we're going to be doing a clockwise circumnavigation 
dropping in at some of the uh, highlights of this big island in the north. We're going to be starting uh, in Otaru, which is the port for Sapporo, um, a historical site in itself um, and a gateway to the north. We'll be dropping in around Teori Island, which has got one of the biggest seabird colonies in Japan. This is an enormous rhinoceros orchid colony. And then we get into the scenic diversity at Rishiri and Rebun Island, because Hokkaido is a volcanic island, tremendous mountain ranges, fantastic volcanoes, and Mount Rishiri uh, is known locally as Rishiri Fuji. It looks like Mount Fuji rising from the sea. So we have this scenic diversity. We'll pick that up up again when we come back into Hokkaido after our brief visit to Russia. We're going to be visiting the volcanic areas of East Hokkaido in the Akan National Park. And then we're going to be heading around the uh, peninsula, the Shiratoko Peninsula. Now the Shiratoko Peninsula, this name, Shirien Togo, is actually an Ainu word, which means the end of the earth. And that brings me on to mentioning the fact that Hokkaido is a mix of cultures. We'll be experiencing modern Japanese culture, but we'll also be getting insights into the indigenous Ainu culture, the people for whom this is their island home. So we'll be seeing the scenic diversity of Hokkaido, we'll be introduced to the cultural diversity of Hokkaido, but we'll also be looking for some of the key wildlife elements. And I think one of the most iconic things here, one of the most iconic birds of Japan, is that red-crowned crane uh, that you see in the bottom of the screen there. This is the bird of happiness uh, for the Ainu people. It's the bird of the marshes, the god of the marshes, Sarurun Kamui. So we'll be looking for red-crowned cranes when we're in the Kushiro area. And then when we're along the shore of the Shiratoko Peninsula, we'll be looking for whales, We'll be looking for brown bears. We'll also be looking for a bird, a seabird of the Sea of Okhotsk. That's the one at the top of the screen with the white spectacles. It's the spectacled guillemot. It's more or less an endemic species to the Sea of Okhotsk. And one of the uh, concentrations of this species is along the Shiratoko Peninsula. So we'll be looking very much at the wild elements of this island. No, I think uh, this is a, a good trip. We've got a, a, a great team uh, on board um, with Mike Moore or Nemo, Lynn, John Buchanan, um, of course, Mark, uh, who will be very actively working closely with, uh, with Nemo to coordinate uh, the, the day's activities. And uh, then we also get, uh, and he didn't mention this, but we get Mark's wife, Mayumi, along. So you actually get, um, I traveled with her recently, and she's delightful, and really is good at bridging the culture of explaining uh, Japanese culture, but more to a Western mind. And so she's a great addition. We also have uh, Rich as a naturalist. Uh, David Wolf is an ornithologist uh, with a vent. And we have Ron Wixman for some uh, culture uh, as well. So I think many people may have been to Japan, but I think most people have not. They might have been to Sapporo, but they have not been to most places in Hokkaido. I've been to Hokkaido. I will say um, it's not just Mark saying because he lives there, it's a beautiful spot. It is a beautiful spot. And a ship is a great way to see it because to try to do this by land and going out on boat would be nearly impossible. So you're in the comfort of the 100 passenger Cal Sky um, and it's a great way to see it. And we also ha have one day trip to Russia if you want to say anything about it and sort of why we do that because people look at this and go, why do you go to Russia? Indeed, I mean, this, this is obviously for um, specific reason, uh, legal reasons. We have to clear out Japan at some point, clear into another country, so that we can continue a voyage. So we go up to the island of Sakhalin. It's uh, separated by a very short distance across the, uh, the strait from northern Hokkaido, from Wakanai. We get to see uh, the southern part of Sakhalin Island, and we go into the, uh, the port of Korsakov, uh, and then up to Yuzhno Sakhalinsk. So we'll get an introduction. Um, our cultural geographer, Ron Wixman, will uh, come further into his own here. Uh, he's a specialist on the cultures of this region, and he'll be introducing us not only to Japanese and Ainu culture, but also to the cultures of the island of Sakhalin when we're in Yuzhno Sakhalinsk. 
while of course the birders will go off hunting for some of the uh, specialties of that island too. So we get this wonderful mixture of northern Honshu, um, we'll get a circumnavigation of Hokkaido, and a brief visit across to the Russian island of Sakhalin. And at most places uh, on this trip, you will get a choice of natural history or cultural, um, and that's great. So if you're traveling with someone who likes culture and you like to go out and do birding, this trip will work because you each can do your own thing and come back and share your experiences. So it's a very diverse uh, trip, and uh, I think having Mark, having really spent time developing it, will be one of our best Japan trips we've had. And my wife and I are so looking forward to introducing our home island to you. So our next trip, we move south to the best of the Great Barrier Reef. This trip is next um, next July. And this trip was also developed uh, in, in sort of coordination with uh, one of our um, expedition leaders, Brad Clipson. He also lives in the area this trip goes. He is from Cairns, Australia. Uh, and this trip came about as the Great Barrier Reef is obviously one of the, the nature, natural wonders of the world, uh, but how to make it different. There is a lot of companies uh, doing trips in the Great Barrier Reef, and we talked, Brad and I talked to Osprey Reef, which is uh, off to the northeast of the Great Barrier Reef. It's actually a separate uh, reef and it's rarely visited and so that is one of the focuses of the of the trip it's uh, 16 by 7 miles and it's got a central lagoon that is never deeper than 90 feet so it's got incredibly well protected snorkeling or diving which by the way this trip is all about snorkeling uh, and or diving you'll do it every day so this is uh, entirely a, a water-based trip um, we then also visit some of the more traditional uh, or I should say well-known islands like Lizard Island uh, on the Great Barrier Reef. And on these places, you don't always have to be in the water. We'll have nature walks. Uh, we'll have uh, Brent Stevenson, who is from New Zealand and is uh, an ornithologist uh, as well. So he will be there uh, to, to help with the land. But again, a lot of the focus will be uh, under, underwater uh, and seeing the, the diversity that the Great Barrier Reef uh, offers. We're actually going in July, which is um, the best month of the year to be there. It's uh, the furthest you can be away from uh, typhoon season. Um, the stingers aren't out, uh, and the water should be at its clearest. Uh, um, we consulted Brad, who lives there, as to when, when to run it, uh, and this was, was his choice. And it's on the Coral Expeditions 2. For those of you who may have gone to the Kimberley uh, several years ago, uh, a sister ship to this with a slightly different design, same company, uh, we used to use in the Kimberley. But this is a purpose-built ship for diving and snorkeling. Uh, it's got able to disembark people very quickly. It's got uh, a small boat you'll see there on the right that can take people out for viewing if you don't feel like being in the water. Uh, you've got um, some zodiacs to drop people off for snorkeling uh, and diving, and we will have uh, this. We will have only maximum about 36 guests, and we will have uh, five staff because there's a lot of different things that can be going on. We can have people diving, people snorkeling, people going on a shore walk. So it's a, a very high ratio of field staff to uh, passengers because of all the things you get to do uh, uh, outside, and. Um, so this trip is an is an eleven night excuse me a ten night program on the um, on the ship, and several people have commented that if they go that far they really want to see more of Australia. And Brad and I have just developed uh, a land program for beforehand. It will be a pre extension that is six nights that actually goes inland in Queensland. So you'll arrive in Cairns and go inland uh, to some of the lodges and some of the wetlands up in the far um, in the farther north area of Queensland. So you get to have a contrast to being in the water and the reef. You get to actually see some of the uh, more jungle environment and some of the inland environment uh, of northern Australia. So it's as we do with our Kimberley trip, which we have next April, which focuses both inland and coastal Kimberley and gives a complete experience. We're doing the same thing here, that if you take the pre, you get inland Queensland, and then with 
the ship portion, you get sort of the ultimate way to visit the reefs of uh, the, both the Great Barrier Reef, but also more importantly, out to um, Osprey Reef. Uh, we've got Brad Clemson, I mentioned. Lynn is on um, the, the trip as well. Um, and uh, that Rich Pagan uh, is, is, will be a naturalist. And then Mike Murphy will be the dive master. Many of you who've traveled on our other trips in the South Pacific or Indonesia know Mike well. He's been with Zagram for many, many years, usually in the capacity of, um, of dive master. So a very experienced team to bring one of the great natural wonders of the world alive uh, to you and a chance to explore uh, Osprey Reef, which is an area most people uh, have never been to. So this is next July and uh, is available now. And if you need a backup ornithologist, just let me know. I am desperate to go on this trip and to go snorkeling and birding. Well, you maybe need to trip Brad on the next trip you're on it with him. So, uh, uh, so that's sort of a, a quick overview of uh, of that trip. And I think if we have questions now, we should move on to those. Yeah. So just as a reminder, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the question pane, and we'll answer as many as we can. We did get one from it looks like a botanical enthusiast wanting to know more about Reuben Island. Um, the floating island of flowers on the Hokkaido trip. Oh, Rebun Island. Rebun yeah, island. sorry. Rebun Island is the um, the uh, paired island with Rishiri off the northwest coast of Hokkaido, um, and it is renowned for its spring flowers. Uh, we're hoping that uh, when we're there next year, this uh, island will be in flower. It has tremendous diversity, uh, including some endemic orchids. Um, specific just to uh, those lowland areas of Rebun. Great, thank you, Mark. Um, also, another question came in for Mark again for Hokkaido. I just wanted to know your favorite cultural aspect of the trip and your favorite wildlife. And you had to pick one for the, of each for the Hokkaido mm. trip. <laughs> <laughs> those are always tough questions for those of us who travel the morning for these kind of questions. I can't, I can't pick one of each. Um, I'll give you two. Um, on the wildlife side. I absolutely love the uh, Akan and Mashu National Park. It's just been extended. It was just Akan National Park, Lake Mashu and the areas around it have just been added into it. Um, the most spectacular scenery in um, Hokkaido, I think in Japan. So that is my wild highlight <laughs> scenically. Uh, wildlife wise, uh, the red crowned crane. It's a spectacular bird. I have been watching them every year since 1980, and I never tire of watching red-crowned cranes. Culturally, I am particularly interested in the indigenous Ainu culture, and so I am fascinated by their arts, their designs, uh, and their music, too. Um, so those are my highlights of Hokkaido. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, one more question here. Okay, will there be hiking on the Sea to Sahara trip? And if so, how intense is it? Um, there will be some uh, some hiking on some of the islands in the in Cape Verde as well as in the Canaries. Right. And if you go with Mark up into the to the Atlas Mountains, uh, it will involve some hiking. But as always on the Zagram trips, we tend we we try to offer sort of different levels of um, of more difficult hikes to to easier hikes. Um, from you, Mark, from having been on that trip and yeah. actually led, what, what can you add to that? I would say that on both the uh, Cape Verde Islands and the Canaries, we'll have uh, walks of right. different lengths, uh, some of them quite lengthy. And of course, if you come with birders, you never know how far you're going to walk. You might end up doing no more than the short walk. On the other hand, you might walk further than the long walk. just depends very much on the circumstances of the time. But uh, when we go up into the Atlas Mountains for our day of birding there, We'll certainly be doing some uh, hiking around um, in the most spectacular scenery in Northwest Africa. Yeah. And for those of you who may not be birders, I know Mark here is frowning at me, but uh, <laughs> we, do, we, we do offer these excursions that are also out there that don't include birding, so you can walk more. So yeah. again, uh, Zagram trips are about choice yeah. and, and fine tuning to have the trip address what you want and what you want to experience. Great, thank you. Another question about Zodiac cruises on the Sea to Sahara trip, but maybe we could answer it for both. How much Zodiac cruising will be doing on each of the Hokkaido and the Sea to Sahara trips? So the Sea to Sahara trip will have Zodiac operations uh, on the out islands of the Cape Verde, uh, pretty much 
each island as far as using zodiacs as far as just doing a zodiac cruise for sightseeing we won't really have any because we use it more for transportation yeah. to the island because that's what you want to see yeah the same in uh, in hokkaido primarily will be uh, alongside in ports but around teori island in particular we're hoping to zodiac cruise there it's a seabird colony uh, and then potentially to uh, Rishiri or Rebun Island. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, is, is there any more questions? I think we've run through all the questions we've gotten so far, but we have probably time for one or two more if anybody has any other questions. I don't see any popping in here. And if you do have another question today and you think of it, call our expedition advisors today and uh, they can uh, they can get a question to Mark or myself today and and get it answered. If you think of something in fifteen or twenty minutes, uh, we can we can get get the information back to you. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, everybody, for joining us today. We're really pleased to have you all here. We're excited about these trips for two thousand and eighteen. Um, and one other note, if you want to listen to the webinar again, we'll have it recorded and posted on our website. So I would look for that early next week. So thank you, Mark. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Bye.